Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Art Fennell Reports. I'm Art Fennell. Tonight, it's hats off to the man of the house, dear old dad. And when it comes to the family, he's supposed to be the pillar, the provider, the protector. And when he's on the job the right way, he is the king of his castle, the master of his domain. <laughs> As long as mom says it's okay, right? That being said, in honor of Father's Day, we're going to talk about fatherhood today. Real men, real fathers, not just baby's daddies. And with the state of fatherhood today, we want to ask the question, what is the state of fatherhood? How much has that role changed? And the, the old lessons that were learned compared to the new challenges of today should be very insightful. Joining me are three fathers with a wealth of experience here to share. They're gonna share us with us their insight, their stories, and their expertise. Let me introduce them to you. We have Reverend Carlton Aiken is here. Uh, Carlton Aiken is the pastor of the Upper Room Missionary Baptist Church in the Mount Airy section of Philadelphia. He is the father of nine children, including five that he adopted. Also here, we have Dr. Leonard Tao. Dr. Tao runs the Pennsylvania Center for Dental Excellence in Northeast Philadelphia. Dr. Tao is the father of one son. And finally, we have Bilal Kayum. Bilal is president of the Father's Day Rally Committee in Philadelphia, a group that supports fathers in the city and promotes positive interaction between parents and children. Bilal is also the father of five, and he is the, grandchildren, the grandfather of 13 children. Gentlemen, welcome to the program, and happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. Same. Thank you. You know, um, when it was Mother's Day, I assembled a panel of mothers to come and talk to me about the state of motherhood today and their challenges and so forth, and I am here to tell you it was very, very educational mm -hmm. to hear from the woman's point of view of what it's like being a mother in today's society. And so today, you have big shoes to fill because you're representing the men. Um, what it's like to be a father today, and by virtue of just being a father, it gives you uh, expert status in the subject matter. Let's start with just a little of background here for the sake of our viewers out there. And uh, Reverend Aiken, let me begin with you. Tell me your story. You're the, the, the father of nine. Yes, sir. Um, tell me about that. Well, um, it's very interesting. Uh, my wife and I uh, started off um, desiring to actually be uh, foster parents um, after our first son was born. Um, and during the interim, it was a five-year span between uh, he and our second child. And uh, we were entertaining just for um, one child. Um, and then we had a unique situation with her uh, cousins where we wound up having an opportunity. Um, they were split up into three different homes uh, and wards of the state. Um, so we wound up actually, um, uh, the story being pulled on our heartstrings, we wound up um, adopting them um, and having legal custody. So, um, and since that time, we actually, my, my, we were... Uh, my, my daughter uh, was born during that time, and then uh, we have a two-year-old. So wow, um, you, you've been a very busy man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was it like bringing everybody together? What was that like? Um, it, it was. It was a shift. It was a shift in, uh, I guess, in our, our mindset in terms of um, how to provide. Um, uh, again, just with with the change in terms of with our son being you know younger you know and again being in impressionable years, we wanted to make sure we we had a safe environment for all of our children. But then you know you you, you understand try, trying to bring in uh, other children, what the dynamic would be with um, um, not necessarily having them when they were younger because mm -hmm. they were they ranged at the time from uh, nine years old all the way to. We have some picture. Years. Have some pictures of uh, some of your family members, okay. and you can just kind of tell us a little bit about sure. who they are because sure. you know. The kids, they, 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 they grow yeah. up so fast, don't they? Who are we looking at here? Yeah, uh, the, the first picture was of Carlton Jr. Um, that's Chase, that's our youngest. Um, and there was uh, Kennedy, who's our, our baby girl, um, and, and Christian uh, Lee. And um, these are our adopted five. Uh, Calvin is uh, the old, oldest boy. Um, and then you have Katrina. Um, you have Adrian, uh -huh. Donna, uh, oh, and Shakira. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. family, beautiful family, yeah. beautiful family. Uh, uh, Dr. Tao, let me let me move on to you. You are a um, uh, a dentist and uh, a very successful dentist, uh, a vibrant practice. Tell me your story. My, I have a, a wonderful son. His name's Aiden. He's just turned five years old. Um, my wife and I originally wanted to have more children, but we have some genetic uh, concerns, and we have one healthy son, and we have been thrilled with the way he's developed. He's a great little kid. He loves his dad. Um, my dad was a dentist. I'm a dentist. Uh, growing up, my dad was not around a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I 
struggled with that somewhat. And I always told myself growing up that you know, I would make sure that I was around for my son. And right when my son was born, I actually bought my practice from a dentist who had passed away. Mm -hmm. And I tried to um, balance the struggles of running a successful practice and building a practice from the ground up. Oh, and I want to get into that uh, in just a minute, too, because that's such a critical issue for, 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 for men today. And your son's name is, is Aiden. Is Aiden. I think we have a look at, oh, what a great kid. What a, what a <laughs> smile. Oh, oh, this little boy. Um, when you look at pictures of your son like that, what, what comes to your mind? Um, hey, he wants to be like dad. He's, you know, he says he wants to be a dentist. You know, he, uh, he knows him around not as much as I want to be, but he also knows that, you know, I provide for our family and I, and I work very hard and he, and he likes that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Let me move on to Bilal because Bilal is actually wearing two hats uh, here on the program for us tonight because obviously he's a father and grandfather. But for years, uh, you have had uh, a calling with the community uh, in this, and this is a huge responsibility. You run the Father's Day Rally Committee Incorporated. Um, tell us about that first. Um, Father's Day Rally Committee, um, this is our 23rd year in operation and what one of the things we're best known for, but every Father's Day we do a Father's Day picnic where we promote and um, celebrate fatherhood. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that is, you know, uh, we came together, a group of men, 24 years ago and had this discussion about all the negative uh, stuff that was talked about, particularly among African-American men, and what could we do to counteract the negativity mm -hmm. and do positive things. So we developed one of the activities was this picnic to say, let's celebrate fatherhood. Like Mother's Days is celebrated. Yeah. Father's was not celebrated. How? So we, we, we organized and we organize a picnic as a celebration of fatherhood and ever since then it's been 23 years and just had the uh, the picnic coming off of a big weekend yes. of activities that you've been doing for 23 years what's it like when you see all of these men gathered and with their kids and just sharing in a good time that has to make you feel like you've accomplished something well it's yeah. a great experience Arthur. first of all I understand very clearly that there's probably more fathers and men trying to do the right thing than they are doing the negative kinds of activities that people always contributed to. So it's a great feeling to see men stepping up, um, taking on responsibility. Um, and we're also seeing a change now where there's more men b becoming s head of the household, single head of household. Mm -hmm. You know, for years, um, it was always this image about only women could raise children, but now mm -hmm. a lot of men are stepping up and taking uh, that I, responsibility. I want to get more into that in just a minute, too, but uh, you have uh, five kids. Five and 13, 13 grandchildren. 13 grandchildren. Yes. What was that like, um, uh, bringing everyone together? It's, it's been a great experience. You know, my oldest granddaughter is uh, a senior at Howard University. My oldest grandson just completed his first year at Temple University. Um, and my youngest granddaughter is two years old, and I have him from two on up to my <laughs> oldest granddaughter is 22, 21. Yeah. So it's a great experience. I mean, what I love about being a grandfather is that um, something that, you know, we could nurture and love our grandkids and then you know the same way they came in the house we yeah. could pack their bags yeah. and send them you back home you know, back. and we spoil them to death so and i always say to my kids you know they always call them and say pop why daddy why are you doing this and you they come home with this attitude i said well now you're you know getting what you gave us yeah you know as yeah. parents so it's, it's a great experience um uh, one thing that's quite common in our society today is the bringing of families together and, and I'm going to say the word blended because mm -hmm. they're considered to be blended families when part of the, the, the children are from, from perhaps other parents or maybe adopted, whatever the case may be, but you are blending them together. That's what society calls that. It, you, uh, two of you have experience with that. I want you to talk to me about your thoughts on that. And, and I know that you, you have some concerns about the word blended. So tell me about it. Well. Well, I, I, I mean, the I, I was actually raised in, in, a, in a household where we were blended. Uh, but me being the youngest of eight, I didn't even realize we were in a blended family. I just considered all my older siblings my brothers and sisters. My parents never uh, made a difference within that. Uh, my, fir my fir father's first wife had passed away, um, and then he married my mother at 19, where she took on four. Um, then she had the remainder of us, my brother and sisters. Uh, and we, we just were raised as a family, you know, and I think it's really the tone that the parents set in the household 
to not make a difference uh, between you know the, the siblings and make an understanding that we're all family, regardless mm -hmm. of you know you know who was mother and father you know uh, biologically, yeah. but we're we're all family. Yeah, and I would imagine that trying to make a separation within the household can really create a bit of a rift oh, there. Absolutely. That's not necessary, and certainly not uh, helpful um, in raising a loving family. Bilal, your experiences on that? I mean, what which is a crucial point. I mean. First of all, my major experience with um, two of my children are, you know, my bi biological children, and three of my children are not my bi biological children, but they are my children. And, you know, I refer to all my children as my children. I don't use step. Mm -hmm. I don't use the term step. This is my stepchild. So my children all understand that, um, and they get along well. Um, but you know, when we first, when me and my wife, my present wife now, we, we've been, we just celebrated our 28th annual oh, uh, congratulations. Uh, congratulations. year of marriage. Um, and my first wife, I was married uh, in a marriage for 12 years. Uh, what I did have to learn quickly is that children do um, have a tendency to kind of play off everybody. Yeah. So me and my wife saw that in the beginning and we kind of said cut, we got cut, cut right through yeah, it so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, so I mean so yeah. you learn those kinds of experience but I think that you know I grew up our, in, in a neighborhood where um, 59th and Thompson West Philly mm -hmm. every house on my block had a mother and father there. Wow. So I, I'm, and that's the way the community was. That is so I grew very up in, unusual to dad. To yeah, dad. I know. So I grew up in an environment where you understood there was a mother and a father, and everybody took care of each other, and everybody yeah. nurtured each other. Sure. Dr. Tao, let me get back to something you said earlier at, at the onset, and that is you talked about your father. Uh, who was a dentist, did very well. You followed in his footsteps and you're doing very well. You have authority in your current position. Uh, um, you've uh, been recognized by the greater dental community. And I understand that you were voted as one of the top 10 dentists a uh, couple of years ago in the region or something like that. Yeah, I was voted uh, top one of the top dentists by Philadelphia Magazine, by so, my peers. Fantastic. Wow. Now, all of that didn't come easy, did it? Wasn't handed to you, was it? No, not at all. And you had to work hard for that, didn't you? Worked hard for Wh the Which meant that you were out of the house a lot because you were working, building a practice and providing for your family. Were you concerned that you were gone too much? And how much did that weigh on your mind? Balancing work, balancing the family. I, before I opened my practice, I was working for somebody and I, was, I had a nine to five job and sometimes 12 to eight, but I was home. And right before we had our child, I bought the practice, like I said, and I, spoke to my wife, I sat her down, I said, if I'm going to go on this route and own my own practice, I'm not going to be home as much. And um, it was, it's tough. It's tough balancing home life. My wife wants me at home. My son wants me to play with him um, and, and you know, help him you know, grow. And my, my office needs me. I'm, I'm fully invested in my office. I'm, I'm a very big micromanager. I, I handle everything. I have a, seven amazing team members, but I handle a lot of the ongoings in my office and I always need to be there mm -hmm. and it's very hard on me it's very hard on my wife when it comes to you know me being out of, out of the house for as long as I am because I have so many duties that I need to take care of and let me get you guys to chime in on this too you're all very successful you're all very busy I mean, this is a common thing uh, in in society where the father is out of the house working and mothers are working too don't get me wrong I'm not implying they're not but particularly for the father uh, that role of being out of the house in the house how much did that weigh in in in, in your thought process and, and still does perhaps well it still does with, with, with me as well because uh, my father i'm um, also being a pastor um, um uh, god rest his soul he actually uh, passed away last year in um, july of last year but but he was out of the house quite often um you know dealing with uh, you know the church members and the community um and uh, my brothers and sisters we always talk about how uh, we sacrifice to allow others, you know, um, the opportunity to have a father figure in their life because he was a father to many. Mm -hmm. um, so even with that model being set, um, it was something where I understood later on in life where um, I was glad to have him in the house, even though he wasn't there all the time. Mm -hmm. But when I seen the impact that he had on other families, then I, I almost made it made me proud sure. to know that he was making that type of impact. So that's why I adopted that. But I, I wanted to make sure that I had a healthy balance within my own home because I knew what I suffered as you yeah. know, suffered with when I was yeah. younger with not having him around. And then, you know, for my football games, my basketball games and then going to you know, different events and not seeing his face there. But I had, you know, again, being a baby, yeah. you know, I had my brothers and 
there, you know, who sure. kind of filled the sure. gap. So, sure. yeah. um, I'm getting ready to take a break here, but before I do, Bilal, let me just get you to chime in on that because when you gather all the men, and, and I know you guys have meetings, and when you're, say, for example, you're all sitting around and you're sharing experiences, I would imagine this one comes up a lot, doesn't it? I mean, yes, but no, I think it's a, the support systems is very important. I mean, for instance, with me, I have to say, you know, I got a great wife who supports me, and um, even though I'm not in, you know, at the house as much as maybe I should be, you know, the support systems there with my wife and, and the children. When we right now, you know, we're terminology empty nester so mm -hmm. you know we're having this new romantic period <laughs> going on right now. you know there's no kids in I my household there's no children in my household so you know but but it's it is tough i mean it is tough but i think that what's what's good to offer let me just quick say what you're talking to is three men who are married mm -hmm. right. and i think that's the difference is that when you have a wife and a family it's even though you're committed to your whatever your mission is or whatever your job is, when you have that support system, everybody's working together. Makes it makes it much easier. Yes. Yeah, yes. By the way, the, the women said the same thing when I had them on for Mother's Day. Um, so you guys are right in step there. We're going to take a break here. When we come back, I got more I want to talk to you guys about, particularly about fathers being role models in the home and in the community. That's very important because people are watching. And I have a little pop quiz with some tough questions that they're not expecting and see how they answer these questions when we come right back. You're watching Art Fennell Reports. We'll be back after this. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there as we're talking about that tonight. And uh, for the mothers out there, we want you to pay close attention. You need to hear what these men are saying as well. Uh, let me introduce my panel. I have Reverend uh, Carlton Aiken is here from the uh, Upper Room Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Leonard Tao from the Pennsylvania Center for Dental Excellence, and Bilal Kayum, president of the Father's Day Rally Committee in Philadelphia. And they've been talking about um, their experiences um, at, at being a father and what they've seen and so forth. Let's talk about this whole issue of being a role model because fathers are role models, like it or not. Uh, and that's so important because your sons are watching, the daughters are watching, people in the community are watching you. You're always under that microscope. What's that like? Let, let, let me start with you. What, what, do you. what do you feel in terms of being a role model? Oh, I think I'm a really important role model for my son. I mean, he says now that he wants to be a dentist just like daddy. And, you know, my son's five. He, we, we, he's his only child, so we do spoil him, and he's spoiled by other grandparents. My in-laws are, are wonderful with my son. And um, he associates, you know, I asked him why he wants to be a dentist, and he told me that he wants to be a dentist because he, likes to want, he wants to work with daddy. Mm -hmm. But he also, you know, he likes because we, we buy him toys, and he associates that I work hard to buy him toys. <laughs> and and I, 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 I'm very into you know, computers and, and, and sports. And my son loves watching stuff with me. So I feel like what I'm doing is helping him grow as an individual and allows him to, you know, be liked by everyone sure. else as well. Reverend Aiken, you're the pastor of a congregation, so obviously you're a role model. We, 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 we get that. Yeah. Um, but particularly in terms of being a mentor to, to other children and so forth, how important is that for you? Uh, it's very important. It's very important. Uh, I think the, the the impression that we have in society today is that there are no true men that are standing in the gap when you know you have um, absentee fatherism you know going on in different areas. So uh, for me, wherever I can uh, be that person in, in a young man, young woman's life, um, to to encourage them to you know to the the importance of family and and having a male role model. I mean, it's it's very important. Particularly uh, particularly with so many negative stereotypes out there. Bilal, you talked. About about this and yeah you know 
you guys are, are doing fantastic. We love you for that. There are a lot of men out there who aren't stepping up, who aren't doing the right thing, who are trying to find their way, who are struggling for whatever reason. A lot of them are, are locked down, they're in mm -hmm. the prison system, or they're, they're, they're slinging drugs on the corners, um, or they're just unemployed and trying to do the right thing. So there's a variety of circumstances. I'm not gonna stereotype here. But Bilal, when it comes to that, uh, isn't it important to try and emphasize to the men in your group that we have to be the beacons of light so that others can see that you can make it as well? I mean, totally. Um, true there are um, but you have to understand the conditions that are created for certain kinds of behavior I mean and for instance you mentioned um, folks in in prison I mean mm -hmm. in Philadelphia now unfortunately we have over 300,000 folks are ex-offenders mm -hmm. they can't a lot of them can't find work um, because of they've the, already done their time the, they're the, on the, the streets now yeah, trying but the to mistakes find work. they made before and stuff like that so there's a lot of pressure going on um, but I think this whole fatherhood thing is, I mean, I'm glad that you're doing this show because I think it is a, a emerging new fatherhood movement um, that more and more men are now kind of step up. Even folks who don't have the resources they need or men they don't have, they understand the importance of being there in their children's lives. Yeah. So I, I see more and more of that with our work happening in the city of Philadelphia. Okay. All right. Um, guys, this is uh, the unexpected pop quiz. I gave one to the mothers when they were here, too. And so these are questions you didn't know were coming. Um, and I want you to, this is our lightning round. You're going to respond to them. Quick answers here. Um, and I'm just going to go down my list. The first one is, um, are you a strict disciplinarian or you a softy when it comes to disciplining the kids? What are you, Reverend Nathan? <laughs> My wife would say softy. Dr. Tao? Definitely a softy. A softy? <laughs> Blau? Combination. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. We're all, okay, so how do you feel then on tough love? Is it appropriate? Is it the right thing to do? Would you spank? Are you opposed to it? I think it has to be age appropriate. I think ultimately sometimes we, we may um, enforce too many things earlier on where we need to have, have that nurture you know, versus dis discipline and, and have a healthy balance of that. And then as they, you know, progress older to understand, you know, you're becoming a man or a young woman that you have to have a responsibility has to step okay. up. Okay. So. All right. Uh, tough love. Would you spank or not? I don't spank. I, I just don't think it's appropriate. If you want to spank your kid, that's fine. But I, I don't put my hands on my child. Gotcha. Tough love. Have spanked. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Um, they're, they're fathers and sons, they're fathers and daughters. Which, 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 which are you better at, being a father to your sons or fathers to your daughter? Oh, I would probably say father to my son. Father to your son. Uh, yeah. you, you've got I, only I one only choice. have a son. <laughs> which are you better at? Probably fathers to my daughter. Father to your daughter. Ah, very interesting. Yeah. Okay, here's the next one. Can a single mom be a mother and a father to a child? A single mom. Oh, wow. Some would say that a mom can help, but a mom can't be a father. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd have to say a mom can't be a father. What do you say? I don't think a mom can be a father. I think she can bring attributes of a father, but she can't replace a father. Same. Same thing. Yes. Okay, all right. And the last one here is, who's the real boss, mom or dad? <laughs> and who gets the ultimate say-so? There's a discussion going on, and there's a <laughs> loggerhead. Who gets the ultimate say so, Reverend Aiken? Who gets the ultimate? I'm the king of my castle, so everything <laughs> I allow everything to happen to go on. Who gets castle. the ultimate say so? I would hope it's me, but I know what battles to fight. There's certain battles I can't win, so I choose not to fight them. So I'm going to see she, she's the boss. Allow. It depends on what the issue is. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, look, most households. I think all men would say that the women, you know. Have the, have the ultimate, but you know yeah. it depends on what the issue is too. Yeah. All right. Let me give you some uh, disclosure here. And we have I have some uh, some pictures of my. I, I'm a father of two daughters. Let's put up the pictures of my daughters. And and, and I asked the question. You know, I'm a softy as well. I really believe that most dads are softies, and the kids know it, particularly when it comes to daughters. Yeah. So I try to make sure that I'm not overly a softie, that I can still put down the law of the land when it has to be, because I think they need that Absolutely. too, uh, and that's important, but, 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 but I get it. Uh, and I only have two daughters. I come from a family of, of, of boys, but I, I believe, and I think you all agree, daughters cling to their fathers more than they cling to their mothers. And that's what true. do you guys think about that? Arthur, that's true. And it's also, it's very important for 
a relationship, the good relationship with daughters. Because you are, when you talked about role models, the father actually becomes the role model for the daughter, how she selects men in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. And, and matter of fact, it might, I really believe now, culturally now, in, in, in society, fathers really need to play more of a role with their daughters and mm -hmm. setting those examples. Yeah. Um, so they don't make those right choices of picking a man in the future that is abusing them, Ooh, that man, is doing all you, kinds you of things. You just said something so, right so there. So they, they, oh, yeah. they look at you, and, and if you're not setting the right example, um, yeah. that could be part of a social problem that we're, we're going to have yeah. later on down the pipe. I, I think we all concur on that. I, I won't yeah. have a, give you a chance to respond. And it's the same thing for the sons, too, but particularly yeah. as they get older. Mm -hmm. They really need to see Dad doing the right thing yeah. so that they can emulate that. Hey, guys, thanks. I think, uh, I think you did a good job here Thank representing you. fathers Thank everywhere you. Thank and on Thank your you. special day. And for everyone out there, we thank you for watching as well. To all the fathers, keep doing the right thing. Hang in there, okay? I'm Art Fennell. We'll see you again next time on The Report.